Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Connected Commuter, giving more to your passengers and getting the most from your, from your intelligent fleet, sponsored by Lilly Systems. I'm Alex Roman, Managing Editor of Metro Magazine, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. I encourage you to ask questions during the webinar at any point, and we'll try to address them. However, if we do not get to yours, you'll be contacted by email with a response after the event. Our presenters today are Norman Mineta, former U.S. Secretary of Transportation, and Garish Apte, Senior Program Manager, Manager at Lilly Systems. Norm Mineta has held multiple elected and appointed political positions during a long and distinguished career in the United States. He served as Secretary of Transportation from 2001 to 2006, having previously served as Secretary of Commerce. He also served in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1975 to 1995. Earlier, he was mayor of San Jose, California, and before that served on the San Jose City Council starting in 1967. During his legislative career, Mineta was the key author of the Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act of 1991, or ICE-T, and was an aggressive supporter of increased funding for the Federal Aviation Administration. Garish Apte is an experienced product manager and training consultant at Lilly Systems. For more than 20 years, he has designed and developed innovative wireless connectivity solutions and held positions with international organizations involved with microcontroller development, wireless technology training, and process control systems. More recently, Opte has execute, executed successful programs that deliver reliable and seamless passenger services to the bus industry. Now I'll hand it over to Norm and Garish. Thank you, Alex. This is Girish Apte. Um, what we'd like to do to start off is to have uh, Norm Mineta talk about a snapshot of today's transportation market. Norm? Thanks, Girish. The, uh, what's happening in general in transportation is that there is lack of funding going into the infrastructure. The gasoline tax is 18.4 cents per gallon that has not changed since 1993. And at that time, the consumption was roughly 17 miles per gallon in terms of automobiles. Now, <clears throat> that's gone to 47 miles per gallon. And even with the increased miles of travel occurring, the amount of money going into the Highway Trust Fund is going down. So the amount of money that goes by formula from the federal level to the states and to the localities is is uh, going down. And that's why in many communities, and especially like in California, you have these self-help tax measures to try to voice, uh, bolster the local monies available. But there's no question that we have to make this shift from automobiles to transit whether the transit be publicly owned or is done by a private company in terms of for a better work um, uh, atmosphere, recruiting, for whatever reason. But the whole issue, of course, is to get better productivity out of the uh, employees. And so whether they're on a transit bus commuting let's say from San Francisco to to Silicon Valley, 50 miles, with full Wi-Fi services and other kinds of, of services available, it, it really is an important facet of what we're trying to, uh, trying to do in getting people out of their single car driver automobiles into a shared uh, ride situation uh, in transit services. Now, most of what's happening is really uh, probably at the local level working with companies that are in the jurisdictions of uh, local government, whether that local government be cities or um, counties. But what they're trying to do, again, is to encourage the movement from from a car to transit, 
and with all kinds of incentives to make that move. And um, and I think as you see local jurisdictions taking this uh, responsibility, that there's much more innovation that comes from a bottom-up in terms of a public-private partnership than a top-down from the federal government saying, now hear this, now hear this, and trying to prescribe what ought to be done. So <clears throat> there's a lot more going on at the local level in terms of organizations, uh, public and uh, uh, in terms of private companies working with their local uh, uh, governments to encourage commuter uh, travel. Now, this also requires uh, a great deal of education. And one of the other reasons it's important is that in the study of the millennials, of the 18-year-olds today, only 40% have their driver's licenses. So they're relying on their parents in terms of, um, of uh, getting them from point A to point B, or if it's a working couple, they're using um, Uber to pick up the kids at school, take them to a dance lesson, take them to uh, whatever other kind of of uh, issues that they may be having uh, in terms of, of uh, dance lessons or Chinese language classes or whatever. So Uber and Lyft and other kinds of services <clears throat> are also becoming part of that whole um, challenge at the local level as to how best for families to be able to get the best uh, productive way of getting the kids around and at the same time try to um, stay out of the uh, out of the private automobile situation. Um, now, in terms of the kinds of commuter services that would be available, um, they're all they, they all depend upon the density of population. Um, is it uh, seniors who are being accommodated? What about people with disabilities? So it becomes a real challenge at the local level as to how they're going to move the maximum number of people by using uh, appropriate vehicles. And uh, a lot of them are going to LNG or other, other than uh, oil, uh, uh, petroleum-based uh, uh, automobiles and trying to uh, and deal with the whole issue of of, <clears throat> of uh, environmental impact at the local level. So all of this really sort of works at how do these how do these um, organizations work at the local level? So um, uh, in any event, uh, maybe we can during the Q and A period go into some of the more specific areas of uh, interest that people on the line might have. So, uh, Girish, I'll turn it back to you. Uh, thank you, Norm. Hello? I'm sorry. No problem. What I'd like to do next is to just talk about, within transportation, uh, what is the role of uh, industrial Internet of Things? We've we've seen many different definitions of what uh, Internet of Things is, and it's the easiest way to describe it is it's a way for uh, having not just machine-to-machine -machine communications, but also analytics so that we can extract meaningful uh, uh, value out of the information uh, and uh, be able to learn from uh, the information that we get. The goal being to be to address specific problems and uh, to improve how we create solutions. Within within transportation, 
the the within the transportation industry uh, smart machines obviously save money uh, this is in two major areas and when what we've seen so far is from the standard area of them being machines if we can predict issues uh, if we can deal with um, uh, maintenance issues so that we can reduce breakdowns that's an obvious uh, savings Additionally, being able to uh, provide analytics of how the transportation vehicles are being used allows us to better model uh, the network so that we can optimize routes uh, and be more efficient about uh, passenger to route utilization. The second major area where money gets saved is in the uh, area of ticketing and validation. Uh, certainly by having machine-readable tickets uh, and uh, things of that nature, there's a reduction in errors, uh, our transaction costs go down, and uh, quite often what can happen is these kind of ticketing systems can be integrated with other, um, uh, other programs so that you can create an overall loyalty-based scheme. Another uh, critical role that uh, IoT has in the success of a transportation solution is to be able to address problems quickly so that the service performance uh, is increased. Uh, by and large, uh, passengers, whether they're on public transit or whether they're on corporate uh, sponsored buses, uh, ultimately want that ride to be, that journey uh, to be a positive experience. By using machine-to-machine uh, -machine communications and the analytics uh, and being able to create good understanding, learning from that information, uh, some of the service components that can be uh, uh, enhanced are the on-time performance, uh, being able to create technical support that's better geared for rider loads, for example, uh, being able to apply uh, CCTV monitoring, both from a, a safety standpoint as well as a security and maintenance standpoint. And one of the things we're finding is that um, being able to provide good service uh, during the journey, real-time service during the journey, does provide a competitive edge uh, to the uh, transportation solutions provider. Finally, uh, I think it would be remiss to, uh, to omit the fact that IoT can also generate revenue. Uh, one of the uh, uh, standard capabilities that people expect from a connected journey is that you have high-performance Wi-Fi available for your passengers. I think passengers in general expect that the connectivity that they get on a vehicle uh, should be uh, as good as what they get at home or in their office network. Um, so if you're able to provide these kind of things, uh, obviously the passengers uh, quickly blend into that experience. And then it's possible to also include um, not just uh, uh, advertising and promotions, but also uh, digital signage, or offer uh, entertainment options such as movies and television shows uh, and other content. So one of the specific um, uh, case studies I want I to look at, and, and we'll get to questions very shortly, by the way, is one of the partners um, uh, of Lilly Systems. This is a company called We Drive You, and they are a commuter shuttle uh, provider for, uh, for leading technology companies. Um, we Drive You provide uh, approximately 13,000 employee rides per month. And for this specific uh, case study, uh, they are running uh, 10 motor coaches for a leading technology company that's based in uh, uh, San Francisco. We Drive You handles all the strategy, the management, and operations, and they are one of the leaders of it. And interestingly enough, they do have 100% passenger satisfaction. One of the uh, testimonials that they get from customers are that the riders are extremely impressed 
with the quality of the shuttles, with the quality of the program, the reliability uh, of the equipment, um, the routes, the schedules of the routes, the professionalism of the uh, of the drivers, and this goes a long way to enhance passenger experience. So that uh, using one of these shuttles as an alternative to riding your car is not seen as an alternative, but is seen as a natural a natural choice. This should be the preferred method. Now, are we uh, uh, doing time for questions now, or are we going to save them till the end? Alex, have we decided on that? Uh, we can we can break it up with a few questions. Um, uh, well, let's just do uh, one quick one, if that's okay. Um, as the new cellular technologies emerge, uh, such as 5G, how does the Lily solution uh, be future-proof? Okay, well, that, that's a good question. Um, we haven't really talked so much about what the specific Lily solution is yet, uh, other than to say that it is a modular solution. So as there's new cellular technologies, or for that matter, new technologies uh, in communications uh, that might not be cellular, uh, the Lily System solution uh, has uh, modularity. It has interface cards that you can populate into our system, and you can combine them so that uh, the Lily technology will aggregate the bandwidth on several different types of media uh, to be able to provide connectivity to the, um, uh, the, the, the moving vehicle. Okay, great. Um, you know, let's move on, and uh, we'll have okay. some more questions at the end. Right. So one of the things I want to uh, talk about here is how do we actually, or what can you do uh, if you run a, a transportation service, whether it's a transit agency or, or a private transportation service, um, uh, for success? I think uh, some of these things should be fairly obvious, but they are worth noting. Uh, you have to look at what are the current operating trends. Um, there's maintenance costs, there's breakdown trends, and these are the things where by using uh, connected information, by having telematics from the vehicle, uh, a great deal can be done to increase the efficiency, the uptime, the service time, if you will, uh, as well as lower the costs. Uh, second aspect is you have to understand what the passenger traffic is. Um, this is not just the route patterns, uh, but also the ridership demographics. Uh, one of the things we found with the We Drive You partnership is the behavior of the um, connectivity, uh, how passengers are using the Wi-Fi changes dramatically in the morning commutes versus the evening commutes. It also is different between the shorter uh, commutes versus the longer commutes. Uh, so understanding the demographics and how passengers are planning on using their time on the vehicles also becomes uh, important in uh, creating the plan. And then the, the third aspect is, uh, as always, you have to determine some way that you're going to measure uh, whether your plan is succeeding. So uh, obviously, uh, given that we're dealing with uh, riderships whose behavior is going to change over time, uh, you need to have some kind of timeline for testing and for fine-tuning. The second aspect is uh, if you plan on generating revenue using uh, infotainment or um, other services, uh, there, there, there's a, uh, an easy way to start adding this in in a staged process. And part of that success can be based on having a platform that is scalable so that you can start with a platform that at a minimum is providing connectivity for passenger Wi-Fi, for example, as well as uh, vehicle telematics, and then add to that different types of infotainment, add to that additional services um, as um, uh, the, the fleet gets more stable. Uh, obviously, nothing is going to succeed unless you involve your customers. And uh, for that, uh, you have to be committed to uh, uh, un unstinting quality. 
uh, one of the things that, as you've seen, we drive you prides itself on, as does Lilly Systems, is that we want to make sure that customers uh, have their needs met. And if that means we have to uh, over-design, uh, we will do that. Uh, we drive you doesn't need for all their shuttles to be as uh, comfortable uh, as they are. Certainly, these riders uh, could also commute on less comfortable, but we drive you prides itself on having uh, the best that they can offer. So it's not just these soft things that the customers touch, uh, but on the connected portion of it, you have to involve um, the IT staff as well. Ultimately, the efficiency and the reliability of a connectivity system comes down to the back office system, comes down to the network operations center that's going to be monitoring and managing the, uh, the, the service. On top of that, uh, you also have to think about the life cycle issues. Um, the, uh, a fleet once deployed will need to be touched, will need to have uh, configuration changes made. So ideally, you need to have a mechanism with which this can be done with the least amount of impact, uh, both to the operation of the fleet as well as inconvenience to the riders. Uh, finally, one of the things that should be done in the plan is based on the customer's requirements, they may want the uh, onboard network, the vehicle network, to be an extension of the uh, office network, the campus network. Uh, and it's certainly reasonable uh, that they would expect that their employees who are on the shuttles should have a seamless transition from the campus to the vehicle. So all of these should be part of the plan. If you want to ensure uh, that your plan is uh, competitive uh, in the long run, uh, ideally a platform that's modular uh, is going to, uh, it's going to uh, extend the life cycle of uh, the equipment you've installed. As uh, I responded to the question uh, earlier, uh, being able to add uh, additional uh, capabilities uh, such as newer technologies for LTE, newer technologies for radio, uh, certainly um, is, a, is a very large benefit in future-proofing um, your, uh, your solution. Uh, additionally, one of the things to keep in mind is as you, want, as you provide additional services, such as CCTV, such as onboard digital signage, such as infotainment, you need a platform that's going to be scalable, uh, both in the ability to add uh, new and better hardware, the ability to add new and uh, increased bandwidth, uh, uh, so that you can scale not only with your ridership levels, but that you can also scale with the type of services you offer your riders. Uh, finally, ideally would be where you have a single platform that integrates fleet management, asset management, that also provides you with exhaustive and customizable reporting and analytics so that what is operating out there gives you meaningful results with which you can go back, make your measurements, and, and look to see is your plan succeeding, and how you can improve the efficiencies. So one of the things I'd like to describe briefly is I've talked about Lilly Systems, um, and uh, let me give you a little bit of a, an overview of uh, what, uh, who Lilly Systems is. We were founded in 2009, and we're headquartered in San Jose, California. We have offices in Taipei and in Amsterdam. Uh, we have over 150 employees. We're privately funded. Uh, our first product shipped in 2011, and we essentially serve the broad transportation market as well as the machine-to-machine -machine market. And we have a, 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 a diverse uh, solutions portfolio, both for transportation as well as for machine-to-machine. -machine. The Lilly System solution uh, is based on the Lilly product family. 
So there is a common operating system called Lily OS, and it, it uh, works with all the products in our product line, and it's designed to be an end-to-end -end solution. Everything from onboard connectivity to, uh, to the uh, monitoring and diagnostics to reporting, analytics, as well as uh, uh, customer service. One of the key technological uh, capabilities that Lilly Systems brings is the ability to aggregate bandwidth from many different types of media. So whether they're cellular from different providers or whether it's Wi-Fi, whether it is satellite or trackside radio, uh, all of these links can be uh, aggregated together. Uh, additionally, we monitor the links, we look at the quality and the capabilities of each of the links, and we can dynamically adjust how much traffic is allocated to each of these links. In essence, as the vehicle moves, we can make sure that traffic is, uh, uh, uses the best quality uh, medium at the best time. Okay, so what I'd like to do then is just talk about what does come next before we move over to uh, the question and answer, answer period. Um, I think maybe in, in, a, in a summary, if you will, we want passengers to have Wi-Fi, but I think it's easy to see that there needs to be a so total solution that can also generate revenue uh, as well as reduce the cost of uh, running the fleet. Uh, we need something that can also differentiate the service that you, uh, that you offer. Um, one of the givens is that the bandwidth hunger is always going to continue. I think we've all seen enough cartoons uh, in the Sunday papers dealing with wanting more bandwidth, and that's no exception now. Um, so ideally, something that's scalable and modular allows you to increase uh, with newer technologies so that this bandwidth hunger can be satisfied. Um, one of the recommendations uh, I can make that we uh, employ here at Lily Systems is for all of our customer fleets, we do recommend a quarterly checkup and calibration. Uh, this becomes the, the opportunity to fine tune based on changes in ridership levels. Quite often there are changes in routes um, uh, every quarter. Uh, we also assess the bandwidth. We take a look at um, which providers are performing or, uh, well or underperforming on other routes based on uh, the positioning of the towers and so forth. Um, so all of these kind of, uh, all of these factors um, have to be thought, thought of uh, for keeping a service running. So just to summarize, uh, the checklist for success is fairly straightforward. Think about the future and analyze your passenger traffic now uh, so that you can plan correct correctly for the future. Uh, determine some mechanism with which you're going to measure uh, the return on your investment. Uh, it, the return on investment doesn't always have to be purely financial. I think ridership satisfaction is uh, very, very important uh, in building loyalty so that revenue generation uh, can become an integral uh, part of uh, your transportation solution. Uh, the other thing is involve your customers. Um, onboard surveys, uh, special offerings, uh, and even contacting customers who've reported support issues two weeks later, one month later. These are all good practices to make sure that customers uh, are satisfied. Um, the, the next point here about setting concrete expectations, that's not always easy to do unless you've got an established uh, historical uh, base for that particular uh, provider or for the particular routes, uh, services you're, you're planning on providing. But it should be fair to point out just like not everyone is happy with their home Wi-Fi and their home connectivity and their home entertainment, you're also going to have uh, passengers who are not necessarily happy with what they get on board the vehicle. 
So it's clear to make uh, it's it's important to make clear what expectations uh, you're planning on fulfilling in designing your your program. Uh, finally, make sure you find a platform that is scalable and durable. Uh, a moving vehicle, whether it's a bus or a train, uh, is actually a harsh environment. People don't necessarily notice all the little jiggles and potholes and the vibrations uh, because our body is water. Well, unfortunately, all the equipment <laughs> that we make is not water, and it does notice all the little jiggles and vibrations. Uh, so find a platform that is durable. Uh, and finally, uh, you know, pay attention to, to, the, to the little details. Uh, like they say in Customer uh, Support 101, it's the little details that count. Um, and uh, if a good plan is made with an, with an attention and an intention to provide quality service, I think the, uh, the solution will succeed. Uh, for any further information, you know, please feel to, to contact Lilly Systems. Right. Alex, let me turn it over to you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much for your, for your uh, presentations, both of you. Um, we have some time remaining, so let's answer some questions. Uh, that came in during the presentation. There's still time to submit some if you have a question you'd like answered. Uh, the first question uh, is, uh, why did we drive you select Lily over other companies that offer passenger Wi-Fi? Hmm, okay, uh, this is Girish. I'll answer that. Uh, I think it might be better to have someone from we drive you to answer it, but since they're not <laughs> here, I'll answer on their behalf. Um, all right, one of the things I want to make clear is uh, we drive you actually operates fleets of vehicles for several different clients of theirs, and they do have other equipment on it. The reason that they chose Lily Systems equipment was that uh, for a particular customer, the existing equipment was just not providing sufficient bandwidth, and it was not providing sufficient quality. So those were obviously two important factors. One of the critical factors uh, that I'm aware of uh, from the client's perspective, not necessarily we drive you's perspective, but the client's perspective, this technology company, is they absolutely wanted the fact that Lilly Systems can provide live technical support. With other, uh, with our competitors, uh, or certainly the companies that, uh, uh, the, the previous company that was supplying equipment, the problem was that if a rider had any issues with connectivity or performance while on board, all they could do is wait until they get to the office to send out an email. Whereas with Lily Systems, we've got an excellent support organization that can be contacted on a toll-free number, or you can tweet them, email them, whatever, and they'll work with you uh, during the ride itself. That's interesting. And, and and so uh, you know, how quick is the turnaround? Are you guys able to kind of address those those issues right on the spot uh, pretty quickly? Yes, we have a we have a network operations center. We monitor it for all of our fleets. So uh, quite uh, quite often we can determine uh, within a matter of minutes whether it's a connectivity issue with the actual device the the rider is using or whether there's some issue with uh, the network itself. I mean, keep in mind, these, these um, uh, luxury buses, they're going up and down the Silicon Valley freeways. Uh, they're going past airports. They're going past large companies that have tens of thousands of employees. And quite often, these buses are stuck in traffic with tens of thousands of other people also using their cell phones. So our network operations center is always on top on see of seeing what kind of bandwidth there is, what kind of conditions exist in the cellular network environment around each and every bus. So more often than not, we're able to resolve the situations um, uh, during, uh, during the, the ride itself. Okay, great. And, and, and you know, I guess, you, can you discuss a little bit about managing expectations from the customer? Um, you know, what does Lily Systems do with the customer in order to kind of find out what they want and, and tell them what, what the reality may actually be? Okay. So uh, one of the ways we can work in managing expectations is to have a test period where the onboard connectivity uh, is essentially uh, un unhampered, it's unthrottled. And right. to, to collect data to see what kind of uh, ridership loads there are uh, and how 
passengers are using uh, the Wi-Fi on an aggregate level. Our equipment is constantly monitoring not only the quality of uh, the links that we use, but also looking at things such as uh, latency, uh, drop rates, uh, these kind of metrics so that we can better judge the experience that the riders are likely to face or are facing. After having collected enough information, uh, sometimes uh, two weeks uh, per route, we can then meet with the, uh, with the client and discuss the results. Uh, sometimes what the client will ask us to do is they'll ask us to prioritize traffic that goes to their corporate VPN. Uh, and lower the priority, uh, for example, for social media or audio streaming. Uh, some, sometimes they'll ask us to um, throttle video streaming uh, so that uh, riders who are watching movies are not using up an unfair amount of bandwidth. Uh, so uh, part of Part of discussions with the customer about expectations is not just what are the technical capabilities, but what is it that they want their riders to be able to face. I think it's fair to say when you're on public transit and it says there's Wi-Fi on board, your ex expectation as a rider is going to be different than if you're riding a corporate shuttle that's provided by your employer. I think you're expecting a greater level of service. So part of Lilly Systems discussion with the clients is what exactly do they want their riders uh, to face? And that's something that the uh, client ultimately decides with guidance from Lilly Systems. Okay, great. Um, and also, you know, a, a key question uh, that always comes up and actually came in here is, uh, you know, how you can measure ROI with, with the Lilly System uh, solution. Yeah, that, that's a good question, Alex. I don't know how well I can answer that. Um, ROI uh, can be measured several different ways. Um, I personally, I like to think of passenger satisfaction because I deal with uh, sponsored vehicles, uh, you know, comp company shuttles a lot more than I deal with mass transit. Uh, so to me, uh, a happy, productive workforce is my uh, great return on investment. Um, I think also from a standpoint of the telematics um, uh, capabilities that Lilly Systems provides, being able to analyze the performance of the fleet, the operation of the fleet, and to be able to look at um, reductions in repair costs because of preventative maintenance, to be able to look at um, optimizing routes, optimizing vehicle assignments on routes, I think all of these get factored into the ROI calculations. Um, Lilly Systems doesn't uh, directly provide any ROI because it's our customers who have to determine for their needs. What we do have is we have inbuilt capabilities that make available this kind of information uh, so that our customers can use these reports, can use our analytics capabilities uh, and determine uh, what the ROI is for 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 them. Okay, great. And and as far as uh, average bandwidth per passenger um, is usually, or what average bandwidth per passenger is usually regarded as satisfactory in a commuting vehicle? <laughs> that that's a good question. Comes down to uh, what the rider is expecting. Uh, when, when someone is trying to do teleconferencing, video conferencing, they actually don't need so much bandwidth. What they need is a, is a very low latency connection. If someone's watching movies, as far as they're concerned, they want it to be in the best quality that they can get. Um, and do work and upload or download a file, I don't think they uh, tolerate too many delays. So uh, what a rider is expecting really comes down to what they want to expect. One of the things that we found is, um, in, in general, during the um, on very, very crowded buses, buses that are full during the morning times, uh, the passengers who are doing video conferencing, we give uh, priority uh, to them so that their latency is reduced. Uh, and by and large, most passengers are able to 
uh, do everything they need with around half a megabyte, a megabit per second traffic. Obviously, our solution is providing much, much more than that. And that's a factor of not only how many LTE cards, but what the, uh, what the LTE conditions are. Um, but on, uh, on, on average, for uh, people who are doing work-related, productivity-related things, uh, half a megabit per second provides good quality on average. Um, on evening rides where more passengers are watching movies or relaxing, again, there's no issues that we've found with passengers being able to get uh, sufficient bandwidth. Sometimes, uh, and I'll be honest here, when a large number of passengers get on the bus uh, at their headquarters, initially it may take a little bit of time for the movies to buffer up and load, uh, but then the, uh, then the streaming proceeds without issue. So it, it, that's a very difficult question to answer um, because, it, as I said, it, it really comes down to what each rider determines is satisfactory based on uh, what he or she is doing. Right. Great. Well, I, I mean, that was, that was a great answer. Um, thank, thank you for that. Uh, I, I, the next question that came in, uh, does the Lily system uh, monitor or restrict usage, for example, uh, inappropriate websites, or is that separate software? Um, no, we can do that, and that's done, as I said earlier, that's done with, uh, in conjunction with uh, the expectations our, uh, the client has. Uh, so in the case of the We, uh, we Drive UK study uh, we talked about, uh, that specific client has certain expectations of what they uh, want the riders to be able to do and not to be able to do. Uh, there are other We Drive U customers, uh, clients I should say, who for example insist that all um, work done, or I'm sorry, all usage on the bus must be work related. So we have at one extreme, we have one client who says only uh, company authorized devices can connect to the network, no video, no audio, no gaming, no social media. Uh, you can only connect to the corporate VPN. At the other extreme, you have another company here in Silicon Valley that is willing to pay for as much capacity, as much bandwidth as their riders need on every route. And they have, they have specifically told us that they do not even want to know what percentage of the traffic is going to the VPN and what is not going to the VPN. And then you have other companies in between. So Lily Systems does not enforce any traffic rules or traffic shaping. We have capabilities to provide that, but what the, uh, what the, the acceptable use is on board is something that's uh, ultimately decided by the client. Okay, great. And uh, pardon me, you may hear some background noise there. Um, the next question that came in: When you say bandwidth is aggregated, how is the data usage split up among carriers? Does the user pay for the data service, or is that included in the Lily service? Um, now, in this, okay, so I think there's two questions here. Um, yes. The, the aggregation uh, is done, if, for example, if we're doing um, static load balancing, in this situation, uh, our customer, the Lily Systems customer, the one who is deploying the solution, would decide what percentage of traffic would go on which provider. Uh, and that would be under a static situation. And they may do that based on the cost they pay for, um, uh, for the different providers' usage. Uh, a, a different technique is something Lily Systems offers in our equipment, which is dynamic weighted load balancing. For that, again, um, the network architect would determine a range of weights <coughs> to provide and, uh, for each um, cellular link. And these weights are based on, typically they're based on cellular characteristics such as uh, latency, jitter, drop rate, and so forth. That way, the Lily Systems equipment is um, dynamically monitoring these conditions in real time and adjusting uh, the relative amounts of traffic that is being sent on the different links. I think that that's answering the first part of the question. Uh, 
The second part of the question, which delay, relates more to cost, is uh, I have to answer it in two parts. Lily Systems equipment um, is bought by some customers, installed in vehicles, uh, and the customers pay uh, all their link charges. A second mechanism is Lily Systems also provides uh, what we call Wi-Fi as a service, connectivity as a service, for which uh, our equipment is uh, installed on equipment and there is a monthly service fee for all the connectivity, all the usage, uh, support, analytics, and reporting. So it comes down to what the customer is more comfortable with. Um, do they want to control the equipment themselves, uh, or do they want someone providing them connectivity as a service? Great, thank you. Um, I, the next question that come, came in, uh, we run buses that go into Mexico. Do you have an international solution? Um, yes, actually, uh, we do have buses in Mexico, uh, and Lily does have an international solution. Uh, in fact, uh, we have, as I mentioned, we have an office in Taipei, we have an office in Amsterdam, and they are active uh, both in the Asian market as well as the uh, European uh, and Middle East mar markets. Uh, I, uh, I specifically don't have <laughs> details in front of me about those markets because, uh, uh, sadly, I'm North America centric. My apologies. Gotcha. No, that's great, and it, it, that's great news for uh, some people here on the webinar. Uh, the next question that came in: uh, What is your take on the security and public Wi-Fi, and what would your suggestion be in handling it? Um, I'm not, I don't, I don't think I can answer that question. Uh, I don't know enough about security to be able to give uh, an honest answer or a clear answer. Um, uh, I think this is a question that we'll have someone uh, reply to uh, via email, uh, if, that's, if that's all right. That's great. Um, next question. Uh, what's the most common reason why the satisfaction rate for riders are high compared to other services? Well, I think I can give a couple of reasons. Um, you know, initially when uh, passengers start using a connected service, uh, quite often uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve in uh, connecting their devices. And I think also there's a difference in expectations in uh, uh, what kind of performance they're going to get. One of the things we found is it becomes very, very seamless. We work with, with our, uh, as I said, we work with the clients uh, to set up policies so that the acceptable use is well communicated and um, uh, it's implemented so that what ride, most riders should not see any issues in their performance. Ideally, the goal is that the connectivity should happen without anyone ever noticing anything. And we're, we're able to deliver that right now when passengers board a vehicle. They do not have to do anything special. In fact, they don't have to do anything to connect. Uh, they're, uh, they're, uh, they connect automatically and they can keep working as if they were in their campus. Okay, great. And, and you know, it, it, I think maybe the, the biggest key of, of this system, uh, putting a system like this on your on your fleet, is is managing that expectation. Um, how does Lily work with the provider to sort of kind of do outreach to customers to kind of manage that expectation? Um, I think this is something that again, I wish someone from WeDriveU was here to, to answer that question. Uh, uh, we have, we have regular, regular contact both with uh, the fleet operator as well as the, uh, the rider sponsors, what I would call the end client. Um, obviously, with all the metrics that are available, uh, we have a, a good way of quantitatively showing what the satisfaction level was from the standpoint of uh, bandwidth utilization from the standpoint of um, delays and drop rates and so forth. So uh, that along with uh, support history or in our case uh, a minimal amount of support uh, calls 
uh, helps the customer to, to better understand is the service working according to their expectations. And as I said, this is a dynamic environment. Uh, ridership levels keep changing. Uh, the conditions of the cellular environment, the connectivity environment also keeps changing. So it, it is something that has to be managed uh, on a regular basis. Uh, but by and large, there's, there's no real issues to, um, with this because uh, our clients are extremely happy that we do provide uh, this kind of service. So they're very happy to work with us in making sure it's always running uh, as efficiently as it can. Great. Uh, well, that wraps up the questions. Um, thanks for uh, everyone who asked a question that wasn't answered. Uh, Norman Grish will be following up via email to answer them individually. We hope that you enjoyed today's webinar. I want to again thank Norm Mineta and Gresh Opte and Lily Systems for today's presentation. I also want to remind everyone that an archive of this webinar will be available on the Metro website, www.metro-magazine.com under webinars. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.